Right. At the end of the day, I, I, I'm not employed. I don't have money to eat. So on an empty stomach, I should go on the streets and, and, and talk. Right. They don't even have the strength because these governments have made the ordinary Ghanaian economically fatigued. Right. So I'm moving Larratty. forward. Mm. If the MPP think that Ghanaians are timid, we will not use the violent approach because we are already in the abyss. We will not fall or sink. Deeper. Kenyan youth didn't use so the violent approach. According to Palgrave, he said that we shouldn't use the violent approach. So I am telling him as a Ghanaian youth that we will not use the violent approach. Right. But we will continue to register our displeasure. But what it is is that they should mark it. Right. That behind our calmness, on 7th December, we will vote for accountability. On 7th December, we will vote as a woman for my menstruation that is being taxed. On 7th December, I will vote for the case who stay home for three months right. without access to a teacher. Right. On 7th December, we will vote for the second freedom of Ghana. All right. Annie, um, talking about uh, her parts, I mean, this was a conversation we've had over the years. And if you remember, I don't know if uh, Louisa is not aware, locally produced uh, parts are tax free. This yes. was in the 2024 budget, so let's have that uh, perspective. I mean, the call by uh, uh, my brother, I think, is not far-fetched. I mean, we've seen demonstrations in this country that people have lost their eyes and uh, subsequently died. You remember the Let My Vote Count this demonstration? But you see, the call for us to be citizens... Let My Vote Count. Yes. Did people die? A guy lost his eye. People were whipped with uh, horse tails and but all that. But nobody died from that. Yes. The guy subsequently died. Um, nobody encourages violence. Violence has never solved the problem. A country in West Africa is complaining that they don't want the same protest which happened in Kenya to happen to them. They are saying that the protest which happened in Kenya were violent and that violence is not part of the constitution. True, violence is not part of the constitution. Now, the country I'm speaking about is Ghana. Ghana's youth are saying that they are going to take it to the streets, protest against bad leadership. The Ghanaian government has responded that they will not allow burning of things stealing of goods and all that negative thing you might think that comes with a violent protest. The protests which happened in Kenya were not violent. They were infiltrated by criminals. The protests which happened in Kenya were peaceful. Now, I don't want to say much in this video. I want us to watch this, uh, this podcast. It's, it's an interview, actually. Let's watch it. Let's get to see why are these Ghanaians afraid and what is it that Africans can do to achieve more uh, into good leadership? Yeah, let's dive in and check it. And he has advised Ghana not to emulate the bloody youth demonstration in Kenya that claimed many lives. According to Dr. Pagre Boachidamkwa, the youth in Kenya uh, could use a democratic way of registering their displeasure about the government. Is that not what the youth in Ghana is doing? Using the democratic way. And who made it bloody to start with? The security services will start shooting and the citizens are supposed to be quiet and run. Um, you see, the Kenya issues and I've been surprised at how we seem to want to put a certain idea in the minds of the ordinary Ghanaian. Do not demonstrate, do not do this, do not do that. But we are forgetting that. Whatever indicators that are in Kenya, that they are on the streets demonstrating, we have passed that line. Mm -hmm. Even to the extent that they, they were complaining about new taxes on bread, mm -hmm. but we are having administrations taxed in this country. Mm -hmm. And we are not even on the street. That's very sensitive. That, that, that mm -hmm. is it. Yeah. As a woman, I'm very passionate about these things. Mm -hmm. And some, some months ago, some stories from mining community says that young girls are getting pregnant at JSS. The reason being that they cannot afford 20 Ghana cities part. And the people who they go to would want to have something to do with them before they give. Our menstruations are being taxed in this country. Sanitation levy, e-levy, bet levy, COVID-19 levy, emission levy. How many taxes have we not introduced from 2021 to 2023? 
Aside the introduction of new ones, even the existing ones, some have seen a rise in the quota we are actually taking. That notwithstanding, the ordinary Ghanaian in the minds of the NPP and the ruling government is that they are quiet because Ghanaians are timid. I mean, Ghanaians are not timid. But what is the stark reality is that behind that quietness of Ghanaians is the people who are desperate for economic freedom. So at the end of the day, we go on the streets to demonstrate. They spray us hot water. They give us tear gas. They give us pepper spray. If you are the ordinary Ghanaian, you will lose hope. So the first point of call is hopelessness. The ordinary Ghanaian has lost every sense of, of, of hope in this country called Ghana. You go to Kosoka Airport in the evenings and the place is packed. Mm -hmm. Delta Airlines is always full. All other airlines leaving the shores of Ghana, they are always fully booked. You go there and it's as if that place is, is Makola and next in the evenings. The ordinary Ghanaian is not timid. The second point of call is that when you demonstrate and talk and talk and talk and nothing is being done, will you not eat? So they are economically fatigued. Right. At the end of the day, I've, I, I'm not employed. I don't have money to eat. So on an empty stomach, I should go on the streets and, and, and talk. Right. They don't even have the strength because these governments have made the ordinary Ghanaian economically fatigued. Right. So I'm moving Larratty. forward. Mm. If the MPP think that Ghanaians are timid, we will not use the violent approach because we are already in the abyss. We will not fall or sink. Deeper. Kenyan youth didn't use so the violent that, approach. According to Palgrave, he said that we shouldn't use the violent approach. So I am telling him as a Ghanaian youth that we will not use the violent approach. Right. But we will continue to register our displeasure. But what it is is that they should mark it. Right. That behind our calmness, on 7th December, we will vote for accountability. On 7th December, we will vote as a woman for my menstruation that is being taxed. On 7th December, I will vote for the case who stay home for three months right. without access to a teacher. Right. On 7th December, we will vote for the second freedom of Ghana. All right. Annie, um, talking about uh, her parts, I mean, this was a conversation we've had over the years. And if you remember, I don't know if uh, Louisa is not aware, locally produced uh, parts are tax free. This yeah. was in the 2024 budget, so let's have that uh, perspective. I mean, the call by uh, uh, my brother, I think, is not far-fetched. I mean, we've seen demonstrations in this country that people have lost their eyes and uh, subsequently died. You remember the Let My Vote Count this demonstration? But you see, the call for us to be citizens... Let My Vote Count. Yes. Did people die? A guy lost his eye. People were whipped with uh, horse tails and but all nobody that. nobody died from that. Yes. The guy subsequently died. Um, nobody encourages violence. Violence has never solved the problem. Violence can never solve any problem. You talk. You express your interest. And for a president that has called uh, citizens to be citizens not spectators i think that uh, if my memory serves me right most of the demonstrations within this regime have been generally peaceful there have been disagreements back and forth court orders from police police taking a, a stop orders and other things together they've been generally um peaceful looking at what happened in kenya what did they start with? They started with uh, social media and all those things, registering their protest. They got a lot of support from some MPs in uh, Parliament who were in support of them. I remember listening to one who even said it was wrong for them to even uh, tax digital content and all that. All those issues, it still comes back to people who are entrusted to work, engaging identifying their stakeholders properly and engaging them. Continuous engagement is one of these things, one of the things that can solve these things. People have become self-aware. People have become very, because of the uh, availability of news. And also, do you remember, with that... Do you remember the condition for E-Levy? Condition for what? If we pass E-Levy, we won't go to IMF. Mm -hmm. Come again. But was E-Levy successful? It wasn't. Now we've gone to IMF, we still have E-Levy. E-Levy wasn't successful. Was it? So why not scrape it? Was it, was it successful? 
Ah, but where you saying? where we are now? Annie, mm -hmm. look. The Ilevi that we the, cut the cake for. You who cut a cake for Ilevi? You didn't see the Ilevi cake. Did you see any when it was passed in parliament after all that happened? Did you, you didn't see Did the you see anybody cake? cutting cake? You didn't see oh. the cake. Did you see anybody cutting cake for Ilevi? Yes. Hey. That was the whole party. Who had a party for Ilevi? There was a birthday party. Uh -huh. And someone presented a cake to the majority leader. Uh, an e -levy e -levy. Cake. Was it a celebration of e levy by all of us? The cake. Is that how you put it? That someone is having his birthday as majority leader, someone presents him a cake. So they if he cut was, it if, and it's if, a celebration see, no, of all of us of was, e -levy. If, if the majority Annie, leader let's then, have, give me time, let's on. discuss this. If the majority leader was unhappy about the cake, knowing that I Annie here am going to pay this kind of taxes mm -hmm. and someone brought me a cake of this nature, mm -hmm. I will even bring it out to public. Because this is ridicule. For this the poor too. taxpayer. Yes. For the poor taxpayer. But don't say that we cut a cake and they celebrated the levy. But that's what happened. Was I there? You Were you there? supposed to be there. Did we celebrate it? It was the majority leader's birthday. Someone gave him a cake. That, don't just come out and say that we celebrated the <coughs> okay. But let's talk about e levy. My time is up. No, no. Your time can be up. You raised it. Let's finish hey. it. You, you raised e levy. Right. When was e levy? Sir? What was the main source of revenue for us when in that particular budget was e levy when was it passed six months down the line mm -hmm. when you, were, you had implemented but that budget mm -hmm. what did we make we projected some five point something billion how much did we make we made some 400 million mm -hmm. obviously i agree with you in principle that if we said that and now we've gone to imf we should do away with it but don't also forget that due to that delay and all that and all the challenges we had, we also need to be careful of the revenue streams we're getting rid of. Okay. Just recently, I even read a report from uh, ISA on how, and they even recommended that don't scrap it, just reduce the thing. And in principle, most of the uh, members of parliament were not against the e levy. It was the percentage. That they were against. Okay. So if you say that because you've said that and all that, I mean, in principle, that is something that must be. But you also need to look at your revenue. All the challenges we are having, you look at your revenue, but gradually we are getting there. It's not as okay. smooth as we are. But to move from a 54% inflation to 20 something, it's mm. progress we made. Lisa it's not what we desire. Is it's what not what we desire. But no, let's be realistic. Look, yesterday I bought, I bought, uh, uh, well, I felt it. Oh, wow. Right. You will all feel it. Mm. You get it. The challenge okay. But the, the commitment to making it better is it, what should give us hope. And not go for an alternative that has no hope for you. That can tell you what they would have done differently. Yeah. That cannot tell you what they are bringing on board. The moment you ask them to explain any of their policies, all they hell at you as insults. But in Dr. Baumia, <laughs> we have a leader who is focused and ready to continue, especially the industrialization drive, which will help us tone down some of these things. Because okay. we being import driven Let me take a break. is one of the problems okay. that is costing us. Okay. So, hello Africans. I hope you're good where you are. And um, if you're not doing good, please do fine where you are. It's good to be fine. Uh, it's not so good not to be fine. Yeah. So, um, I have a video here I want to share with you about uh, Ghana and about Kenya. It's a good one, Ghana. Answer. This one is a good one. So, there is a very interesting character in the holy books called uh, Debukadneza. I like using Nebuchadnezzar a lot because Nebuchadnezzar represents those people who think uh, they have it all. Huh? They think that they, because they have achieved one or two things, the whole world belongs to them. No, the whole world belongs to God and only God. We are all tenants. We are all tenants. We don't belong here. We are all tenants because we come and go. We come and die. Death has been promised in the holy book. Once we ate from that fruit, death was promised. So we are all tenants. We are not here permanent residents. Even the devil is a tenant. There's a time he'll be facing serious punishment. Yeah. So Nebuchadnezzar is a very interesting figure because he has acquired a lot of uh, empires. He has acquired Europe. He has acquired Asia. He has acquired some parts of Africa under his name. And so he's thinking he's the greatest. You understand? 
No, he comes to a point where he is calling his uh, fellow kings, he is calling his uh, officials uh, for a party. In this party, he organizes a lot of feasts to celebrate his achievements. Just when he's uh, busy telling stories with his women and uh, drinking wine, a hand without a body appears. The hand was floating on air. It defies the laws of physics. Uh, that's the most high God. He defies everything. He created physics itself. So he goes ahead, uh, ahead and writes many, many tekel and some words. Uh, I have forgotten those words. Which means your days are numbered. Yeah. Basically means your days are numbered. From that day henceforth, Nebuchadnezzar uh, cried a lot. He called a lot of witch, witch doctors to come and translate what was many, many tekel. They could not. But there's our, a single young man, a very young, handsome man. His name was Daniel. Daniel is the one who, whom God gave the gift of translating uh, these uh, spiritual words. Yeah. It came a time Nebuchadnezzar was eating grass. Yeah, from human being to eating grass. God was trying to show him, I'm the one in control with you. Yeah. The same thing is happening with African leaders right now. African leaders are like uh, Nebuchadnezzar. An African leader might stay in power for the longest time possible, thinking that they are the savior of that. They have this messiah complex. Like uh, our president from Uganda, Yoweri Museveni. I've done a lot of videos back there, back then. Uh, I've also visited his country. Yeah, I have visited Uganda. I stayed there for some days. Now he thinks he's the savior of that country. And he thinks that if he leaves power, the person who will get into power will fail the country. I'm telling you, there's nothing to fail over there. Take it from me. Uh, Uganda, just like any other African country, just like my country itself, we need work. Work is needed to develop us to a first world nation. I'm saying this from a, from a heart, a heart of sympathy, a heart of understanding this oppression. Now, we have also Ghanaian president, Nana Akufo Addo. Recently, recently, like four or five months ago, people have been complaining that uh, Nana Akufo Addo have been uh, a puppet. There's a time he dissolved a meeting that was, being, was to be held uh, among the youth of, um, of Ghana, where we had PLO Lumumba, we had Peter Obi of Nigeria, we had... Uh, Arikana Chihombori Kwao, who was also to come. There's a lot of people who were planning to come over there, but at the president of Ghana, they solved all this. There's also a video where the president of Ghana, he is trying to sell out, huh? he's trying to sell out his neighbors to the US. And most importantly, you can never hide the truth. You can try as hard to hide it, but no. Somehow, somewhere, it will always get revealed. The video leaked out where he was trying to report. He was trying to call to tell uh, the U.S. that his neighbors are doing this and that. It's not in his business to do to know what your neighbor does. You stay in your house, do your own shit. Don't go into someone else's house trying to ask yourself what did they eat for dinner? At what time did they turn back? We have those kinds of people, and those kinds of people are not good neighbors. They are actually. Um, destroyers they the ant neighbors they are destroyers now ghana ghana is the chief of today ghana uh ghana's uh, ghana's the ghana ghana's a country sorry people have been rioting we've seen from uh, from the video that people are rioting and uh kenya itself has become a prime a prime yeah prime Example, because what Kenya did that day when Kenyans demonstrated, by the way, it was a peaceful demonstration. Kenyans did a mind blowing thing. Kenyans did something which nobody thought a youth from a country such as Kenya would do. People would think that countries such as Europe are the countries where you'd find uh, people demonstrate in such a way. Kenyans demonstrated, and it was a peaceful, most of it, most of it, like 90%, it was demonstrated peaceful demonstration. But then came an idea that 
there were infiltrators infiltrators are people who are maybe they were hired by some goons you know some people will always take opportunity of bad things they'll take opportunities of situations and they'll rob you if somebody is having bitterness with you they'll take an opportunity of a chaos to harm you and that is what happened in Kenya some of these protesters alleged protesters I went ahead and stole from companies, stole from supermarkets, robbed people, burnt cars, did a lot of things. You understand? These were not the real demonstrators. And now, Ghana is fearful that what happened in Kenya is coming to it. You understand? Kenyans, we had peaceful demonstration, and now Ghanaians have it twisted. I think the leaders are the ones who have it twisted. They are saying, don't bring that which happened to Kenya here. The same thing is the one which happened with the president of Uganda. You saw, first of all, he started giving a perfect example when he, he did what? He arrested this young boy for insulting him on, uh, on TikTok. The young boy went ahead and insulted the president of Uganda on TikTok. He was throwing a lot of insult to the president. The president, maybe not the president, uh, got him arrested and he's going to serve six years in jail. You know, there's a point of criticism and there is a point of insult. Criticism is allowed. Against criticism is a, is a human right. It's, it's embedded in the constitution. But insult and throwing derogatory words is not permissible. It's like defaming. It's like defaming someone, which I don't think it's appropriate. Defaming someone is never ever appropriate. You understand? Now, the boy must have been arrested under the allegations of the defamatory statements. He was offering defamatory statements. Now, coming back to Ghana, Museveni actually, going back to Museveni again, Museveni arrested this young boy, or he had him arrested, or one of his officials had the boy arrested. Now, going back to Uganda still, uh, the other day, Ugandans planned to have a palia, to have a demonstration in the streets of Uganda. You saw how much it happened. The president did not allow, and he said, "Thou shall not." Don't actually the exact words were, "Don't play with fire." What is this fire? Fire is a metaphorical word for eh? you know. If you try, you will see. You will see. I will punish you if you try doing that which Kenyans did. You know, fire consumes, yeah? I'll try maybe and kick you, pew, pew, you. That is what he might have done. That is what he promised to do. What is fire? Pew, pew, removes fire, right? Ghana, Ghana is afraid that that which happened in Kenya is going to happen to it. You know, sometimes uh, they say that the shockwaves which hit Nagasaki and Hiroshima reached the islands of Philippines. The shockwaves were felt as far as Philippines. Now, the shockwaves that were there in Kenya reached as far as West Africa as well. You understand? The impact was so, so big. Now, the Ghanaian government is, is openly afraid. They're, they can't hide it no more. They are afraid that what happened with their West, East African counterparts is coming to happen to them. But who will be guilty? You know, the guilty are always afraid. Eh? If you know you are not wrong, why would you be afraid? You'll be confident that I am right. I have done nothing wrong. I am right. Because you're not guilty. The guilty shall always be afraid. But those who are not guilty, my friends, these people shall never be guilty. And that, that is what Ghanaians should learn. Not only Ghanaians, all the countries in Africa that are corrupt should always be afraid because a team is coming for them. The special weapons and tactics team of the youth are coming for them. Our parents fought hard. Our parents really did much to stop uh, corruption during their time, but they were suppressed. They indeed managed to achieve one or two things. Now it's our time. It's the time of the youth to stand up and to fight against oppression, uh, uh, corruption, and all the things that are not appropriate to a government. Yeah. 
Now, that is all I have to say. My point is Ghanaians should pronounce the idea that bad leadership will not be accepted in Africa. That is just the message. That is just the message. Africans are fed up. After the colonizer, we can't have a second colonizer. No, 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 we can't allow that. And I applaud the Ghanaian youth for thinking that no room for corruption, no room for nepotism, no room for bad leaders and puppets. Those are the worst, actually. They are the ones who carry the parasite. They carry the disease inside them. Yeah. That's all for today. That's all I can share with you in this um, beautiful video. If you like it, kindly give me a super thanks. Uh, subscribe, like, uh, share. Yeah. Do all, do all of that. And uh, we will so much appreciate. And I promise you to bring you uh, very interesting content about uh, Africa. Yeah. See you in the next video. This is Evans from Kenya. Original documentaries. See you in the next one.